In this video, we introduce an effective and highly profitable trading strategy, scalping. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and The Playbook. In this video, a trader from our firm shares winning trades made by scalping that you can learn to grow your trading account. So this is going to be, like Mike said, an introductory video to scalping um, for some of the newer guys in here. You know, you're probably well aware of all this stuff. I've probably talked about it with you guys before. You've heard it, um, but let's dive into it. So what is a scalp? So a scalp's a very short-term intraday trade um, that looks to capitalize on quick movements in a stock's price. You know, we're not building into positions. We're looking to quickly capture um, some type of volatility expansion, you know, quick move. Uh, this is going to require an ability to physically read the tape and make quick decisions based on momentum moves. I have read the tape in quotes there because we're going to do a lot more of that in the second video. Um, but at the end of the day, reading the bids and offers and the speed at which the bids and offers change. And this is usually performed in stocks that have rapidly changing prices and like I said, a decent level of intraday volatility. In layman's terms, it's really just buying and selling a stock with a very tight risk to capture a quick move in the direction of your trade. I'd like to give some context on this, if that's okay. Sure. So, one of the very best intraday traders that I know who makes consistently $500,000, $600,000 a month, every month, guess what he does for a living? He only scalps. He scalps with size. He only scalps. One of the myths is that you can't make a lot of money scalping. All right? That's not true. And I know another trader uh, in the Midwest who works at a tier one firm and his uh, trading style, I wouldn't say is only scalping, but he very much reads the box, trades with size, gets in when the box is with him, gets out when the, the level two is, is showing it's time to get out. Very, very big trader. I pray that there are a couple of guys in this room who become as big and as good as any of those guys. So don't let anyone tell you that scalping's not a legitimate way to make money. As you've seen with Tesla over the last couple of days, you literally could have just scalped and made over $100,000. Just just trading in and out of that, not even with particularly big size. I know one trader who actually did make over $100,000 who never really got more than 2,000 shares scalping Tesla in and out. And the other thing I'll just sort of say is just never let, if you're making money in a particular strategy, it's the time of the month where we do our monthly reviews. If you're making money in a particular strategy, grab a hold of that, do more of it. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not sophisticated enough not academic enough, it's not sexy enough. If you're making money on it with it, that's a big deal. I put some fundamentals of scalping together because it's important to know that the whole idea behind scalping is that you're looking to get these quick moves, you're looking to have very tight stops, and because you have very tight stops, you're gonna end up having to size up accordingly. You know, because let's say for the size that we use, if you have 100 shares or something, you know, you're looking to capture 30, 40 cents, and you're looking to risk 10, 20 cents, you know, you want to be sized up so that those quick scalps are actually meaningful to your P&L and, and, you know, in any type of way. And because of that, you have to be super diligent with actually taking those stops because a scalp, you should get in, it should work quickly, and then you should be out quickly. If it doesn't work, you need to hit out quick. You know, that's the whole fundamental idea of you're involved looking for some type of momentum move, some type of drive in price away from your entry that happens fast. You should know quickly whether or not you're right or wrong, and you have to be diligent with your process of taking those stops. Like any type of trading strategy, it's going to have to have a specific system and plan that fits for your style, and that's going to be something that you're going to have to develop. You can't just go in and you know, start slapping into a bunch of shares of stock in and out, in and out, in and out all day, racking up fees, unless you have a very organized way of doing that 
that you have stats to prove. Obviously, if you're just starting out as a trader, you're not going to have those stats yet. That's why you start on the demo. You know, you paper trade these ideas. You back test them in the software. You, you build out scripts and things like that to see whether or not these strategies work. And look to develop some type of idea behind scalping. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to get into some charts and show some examples of scalps that I've taken and types of setups that I'm looking for that I think have actual power behind them. You see a lot of guys that you can scalp in trend, you know, looking for these little wiggles and things like that. But again, if you don't have a system for that, you're just going to be buying and selling blind, you know, overthinking the tape. It's easy to see things that aren't actually there. If you want to learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That's going to open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So kind of leading into that, the most effective scalping in my opinion is done around key technical levels that will provide a momentum move in either direction, you know, long or short. Ideally, you want to be quickly in the money on the right side of the drive and price away from that technical level. Okay, so here's a quick example of this. This is actually in NVIDIA um, two days ago. I personally did take this trade and you know, had a little bit of breaking news behind it. So context is always going to be key. Even if you're scalping, you need to understand what the stock's doing. You can't just slap in expecting a chart pattern to pan out. The strongest trades, even on the smallest time frames, are always going to have the wind at your back. So in this example, you know, I'm highlighting resistance levels were put in early in the session. NVIDIA opens up, develops its opening range, fails, tags VWAP, which is artificially high because it was gapping up with the market comes in and this 216 level starts to form pretty solid resistance and then we fail and you know we don't test that price again until much later in the day. Get back above VWAP, now we start to build this nice consolidation of VWAP underneath those resistance levels. So if I wasn't scalping, if I was looking to build into a position in this, which is what you guys are kind of normally familiar with, you know I'm looking to buy these dips against VWAP, you know get bigger as it tightens up, add a little bit more as it goes through, that's position trading. You know, you're trying to trade a thesis, you have a wider stop, you're being loose with it, you're buying dips, maybe you're trimming some off. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is taking the quick momentum move, being in the money right away, selling as soon as momentum's over, and I'm in and out of the trade in one or two minutes. Those are scalps. So in this particular instance, news ends up hitting that NVIDIA was gonna launch um, like it's something to do with their product line. I didn't even have time to really hear the news. I saw the volume coming in, saw the technical level of 216, quickly saw that we had a compression, hadn't been watching the stock beforehand. Instantly, I'm, I'm in the box, I'm looking at the bids and the offers, I'm trying to figure out, okay, if this gets above 216, it's pretty likely gonna have some momentum behind it as you see the volume kind of come in. If it gets above 216, I bet you I could, or I'm sorry, 246, I look like a one. If it gets above 246, I can probably get this for a point to 247 very quickly as it will make new highs on this volume. So when that idea breaks 246, I quickly hit in. Um, momentum slows up above 247. 247.50-ish starts to be a little bit of a level on the tape, and I hit out. And that's it. You know, very quick one-point move. I was in the trade for one, two, three. I, I sold on that third candle. Three-minute trade, move on to something else. You know, in and out, that's the idea of a scalping mentality. You know, dine and dash. Take your money where you can get it, be in the money quick, small losses, and take a big move. Important point. You guys are in, most of the guys in the room are in the sampling stage. You're trying different types of trades, figuring out which ones are best for you. The next stage you'll get into is developing your playbook. And then after you develop your playbook, you're gonna try and do what? You can try and focus on what, Jake? Being consistent. I'm glad you gave me the wrong answer. That's what most people would think. The next stage is being consistent. What is a strategy that breeds very consistent traders? Breeds very consistent results, month over month, scalping. 
And so not everybody wants scalping. And so because it's, it's, it's a simple trade that you know if you're right quickly or not. You buy it. If it's not working, you get out. Not for a lot of money. You don't take a big loss. You buy it. It's working. It's in your favor. Your reward is, is higher than, than your risk. Um, and so if you wait for those big levels in stocks that are in play, you will be consistent with your results, which is important in that stage of when you're trying to get consistency. And then, Jake, after you are consistent, you can size up and focus on that. Yeah, so you know, going off of that, in this example, I bought as it broke 246, this previous level. If it re-offered under 246 and was back under, you know, NVIDIA can move. So if it's back under 245.80, right after breaking above 246, I'm hitting out really quick. You know, like I'm not interested in seeing whether or not it's going to get above the level, if they're going to support it, if they're going to keep going. I'm not interested in seeing if it pulls back to the breakout point of the wedge. Maybe I'll buy a little more. I'm looking for this to drive through the price and separate quickly. I'm looking to see those offers get lifted, tape speeds up. I'm looking to see if this can get 40, 50, 60 cents right away. And NVIDIA, you know, you develop a certain type of feel for certain products. I trade NVIDIA a lot. So I know that when NVIDIA breaks a level, what it looks like when it works is that it's going to separate from price quick and I'm going to be in the money and I'm going to be set. As soon as momentum slows, it's probably going to need some time to consolidate. So that's why I'm, I'm out quickly as soon as I see the tape put in a candle like this. Offer starts stepping back in. You know, the green on the time and sales is kind of slowing down. Take it, and I'm out. What was your order method for getting it? Did you use a stop order, a market order, or did you bid for it? I think that's going to depend on your style, too. Um, I think in this particular instance, if you throw bids in, you're going to miss it. So oftentimes for scalps, it depends. In this type of move, I always scalp with momentum because ideally you want to be in you know, in favor quick. And in that particular instance, I'm going to pay up. You know, so I'm just hitting offers. I'm going to take it because if it works and I pay the offer, I'm going to be in the money right away. And if I put bids in, I might not get filled. And then I'm going to have to chase it for what? 30, 40 cents? Maybe I never get filled. You know, that's not what you want. You know, that's not the idea about scalping. At the end of the day, whatever I pay in fees for not adding liquidity shouldn't really matter because ideally scalping, you know, tight risk, really nice reward. You know, I risked maybe 10, 15 cents on this, made a point. You know, so those are why you're, you're starting to get really nice risk reward trades. Uh, so that adding liquidity isn't necessarily as important. Um, so you oftentimes will have to pay up. Okay, here's another one. So we just saw kind of like a breaking news, technical level, opening range breakout later in the day. So what we're gonna have here is an example of um, Apple breaking the low of day that was put in the first hour and having a quick momentum move to the downside. So obviously this one's not going to be you know, as volume driven as NVIDIA was because it had a little breaking news to it, maybe add a little bit more size to something like that. But on a purely technical level break like this, you know, you're looking to enter as soon as the recent consolidation that you're in. So you know, Apple really weak in the morning, bounces up to VWAP, consolidates, breaks down. If I was building a position, I'd like to make this parallel so that you guys see how there's power behind the scalping setup. If I was building a position, ideally I would have started shorting somewhere around here. You get a consolidation right ahead of the lows. You start shorting a little more, and then maybe you add this momentum lot. But considering we're talking about scalping, let's say I'm not in the trade. I only want to take scalps. That's my strategy. That's how I make money. This scalping opportunity would be, we have this really nice consolidation right above the lows. If this consolidation breaks and some volume comes in, can't see the volume, we're pulling this up. Volume comes in, then you start to see, now if we break this low, we should separate away from price and maybe I can get 50, 60, 70 cents. So in this instance, as we were coming down, we broke this consolidation. I hit underneath 321.50, which is kind of the low of the consolidation. Again, you know, hitting the bids, I'm, I'm willing to take liquidity, that's fine. I hit the bids, right away it's at 321. I'm expecting this low to get broken on volume. You see the increase in volume. As soon as momentum slows, I'm out. So it goes all the way 320, also a whole number, a little bit of a psychological level maybe. You know, we get a spike right down to that level, I'm taking it. I think I got out maybe five or six cents, you know, 320, 
fit 05. Um, I usually put my bids, if I'm scalping like that, I'm trying to get a quick wick down, usually put my bids, you know, one cent ahead of a five, you know, five, 10, 15. I'm putting my bids in at six, 11, 16, 21. Um, things like that so you guarantee to get sprayed because institutions they like to use those nice round number areas um, for liquidity purposes so sometimes it's nice to front run them a little bit especially if you're scalping because I can't handle taking that wick back up I need to be out it's a momentum move I'm you know I'm scalping okay so those were like really good examples of technical level breaks where I'm looking to get momentum now I want to talk a little bit about trend following scalps so oftentimes this can happen you know, let's say you have a core position from really good prices and you're looking to trade around that core, generate some cash flow. Great method to do that is to scalp along with the trend. Again, you have to develop your own method for doing this. You can't just buy every pullback and trend, you know, and, and expect it to bounce. You, know, you have to have some type of method to do that. People use different things. Some people use trend lines. Some people use short-term RSI. I personally use moving averages. I, th I think they are really they work really well to develop a specific system with. You guys have heard me probably ad nauseum talk about that. Again, it's important that whatever you develop is for you and works for you. Again, back test, develop your system, look at your stats. Um, so let's dive into some examples of trend following with EMAs. So on this chart, we have a um, 10 period EMA. I like to use that for really short term uh, trend following. So this is actually in Tesla. Um, I think this was maybe like a week or two ago, two weeks ago. It's crazy considering what the price is now. But this is later on in the day, you know, just a little bit of context. We developed some type of a range earlier in the day. You know, now we're at highs on the day and they put in this little bit of a price at 580 on resistance. So we're pressing, 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 pressing. It breaks above 580, good volume. That's a good example of what we talked about before key technical level breakout. Take that for momentum. You know, it's crazy in Tesla, you can take that and make two points really fast. Um, nowadays with the volume, you can make five, 10 points on these scalps in Tesla, it's insane. That's a perfect example of the technical level breakout scalp. But if I want to trend follow this, once I have an idea that the stock is making new highs on the day, is thoroughly and within trend as defined by my system, it's holding above the nine, nine or 10 EMA, now I'm looking to buy pullbacks into that 9 EMA to quickly dish out on overextensions to kind of scalp around. So ideally what could happen here, you get a big drive away from 9 EMA, you pull in really light volume, you look down there at the volume, it's starting to contract, tags the 9 EMA, put on a feeler scalp position, pulls away, you get another extension away from the 9 EMA, and I dish that out. Right, and now I'm building cash flow. Look at this, 582, right to 585. Three points in a, when I'm looking for maybe a 20 point trade, I'm consistently taking five to 10% of that move and adding on, working, even working on my average price if you want to call it that, adding cash flow, trading around a core, or just purely scalping and this is what I do to make money. You know, I'm not even in this as a core. In and out, in and out, in and out. That's perfectly reasonable. It's exactly what Bella was talking about. You can be that trader if you want, but you have to have a system that works. Again, big overextension, pulls in on light volume, and then you get another little thrust really quickly here to new highs. As soon as, you know, if I was gonna take this and it gives up the nine EMA, what I like to do is have some type of rule for where's my confidence level if I'm trying to scalp this. Oftentimes for me, it'll be the next um, EMA. So for me, the 21 EMA. Or if I'm scalping the 21 EMA, the 55 EMA. Um, again, you have to build your system out for yourself. Quick note. Sure. Scalping works best for people that think quickly. So if you have an experience, if you have a background in gaming, if you have uh, a background where, for whatever reason, you can do math really quickly in your head, and you've noticed that about yourself, um, if you are tasked with coming up with a decision that requires processing a lot of information quickly, and you're just one of those people, and we all know people like this, Spencer's like this. It's like you, he listens for like 10 minutes and then he's just like, the answer is this. Those are the types of people that should be thinking more about scalping. If you're more of a reflective person, 
Uh, if it takes you, here's that person who goes into uh, a grocery store to buy a loaf of bread and takes you like five minutes to figure out which loaf of bread to buy, that's me, uh, then you're, you're probably going to look for more swing trades or more trades that really set up and, and go from there. Um, so you want to just, you know, swang obviously, scalps nicely, quick thinking, background in that. So think about that when you're, when you're trading these things. You know, you think pretty quickly. It's a strategy that you can employ probably pretty easily. Yeah, so I, I kind of talked about a lot of this, you know, but, you know, just to put in words, some of the tips that I use for trend following scalps. You know, got to have some type of system. I like to use short-term EMAs. Um, I use a nine-period EMA on a one-minute chart. Um, definitely super possible method for scalping along a strong trend. You have a way to define the trend. You have a way to enter and exit. You have a way to define your stops. And you have a way to define your exits. Any type of big expanded candles away from the nine EMA, dish it out. If you miss the next part of the move and you're worried about that, then you're not really understanding the essential fundamentals of what scalping is. You know, if you struggle with FOMO or something like that or, or chasing things, you know, maybe scalping isn't the best idea for you because you might need to be able to sit through things and build positions. If you're scalping, you're in, out, you take your money, you run, you go on and look for the next opportunity. It takes a little bit of patience, you know, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think, you know, I'm, I'm hitting in, I'm hitting out, I'm hitting in, I'm hitting out. But at the same time, you're not doing that without a system. You're being patient, waiting for those specific areas to trend follow or to break a key technical level. You have scanners to develop those setups and things like that. You know what stocks are in strong trends. That's how you could really build out a strong scalping system. Um, so here's some other tips. This is just kind of specifically talking about um, what I'm seeing in the tape when I'm scalping. So we'll do another video where I'll actually show you guys the tape and some examples of me making trades in them. The chart patterns are really the principle of how to effectively find areas where you can get drives in price that you can capture very quickly with scalps. But you still have to be able to read the tape. So some of the things that you might be one looking at is the acceleration of the speed and how the bids and offers are changing. So this is, I brought this up in one of your meetings, um, how I saw some of you guys had it where it aggregates all of the bids or the offers at a specific price and then you just stack them. And I made a comment, I was like, oh, is that, is that making it easier or harder for you guys to read the tape? You know, is it making it so you can't really evaluate the speed? Is it only really useful at key technical levels where you're seeing them have massive size on at the bid or the offer? I personally have it set up where it's color coded with a gradient. So it's yellow and it fades to a lighter yellow. So the darkest yellow is where the price currently is. Um, Sharks, for example, is blue and then goes to a lighter blue because he has blue light glasses. So, you know, probably easier on his eyes and doing it 10 years. You want to be able to see and build a system out even on your visual cues for how you're seeing whether or not the tape is speeding up because then you start to build the intuition, right? Like scalping is definitely a systematic thing and you need to have set rules behind it. But at the end of the day, like Bell is saying, it's very quick decision making. And again, your visual cues are a great way to help out with that. You know, I can tell when if I see a flurry of green prints coming in on the time and sales and I see the bids and the offers really start to move quickly right up to the key technical level, let's say 99 cents by a whole number, and all of a sudden I see the whole number decrementing on the offer, and I see a bunch of green prints coming in, that's when I hit it at 246 in NVIDIA. And then it gets above and now you know, I'm instantly in the money. Those visual cues are gonna take time to develop. I think the default here is that you have a bunch of different colors for everything on the bids and offers on the montage. I always thought it was impossible to tell what was happening. All these flurries of colors coming at your eyes, you know, that's not necessarily the best way to build some type of intuition on how the tape's moving. You know, again, as with all things, you have to develop that for yourself. Maybe you like the color green. You know, if you're looking to scalp, maybe you want your montage to be green. I don't care. Develop some type of way to do that. Um, yeah, so I did quickly mention large size at a technical level. If you see down the order book, there's a huge block size at a whole number. Um, the specific things that I like to do with big whole number moves like that are in IPOs. So a lot of times recent IPOs will have huge institutional participants who need to support the stock or need it to go up because they just allocated 
you know, tons of shares. In those particular instances, sometimes you could see, you know, hundreds of thousands of shares sitting on the bid or the offer at a specific price. Those are the types of moves where you want to get involved in. If anyone was watching Tesla yesterday, as it came down to 850, or was it 750? Anyone remember? 750. I think it was 750 into the close. So it came into 750, stocks on SSR, 750 by 750.01. And there's big size at 750. You know, Tesla's a high beta stock. You guys know what big size is and that, you know, a couple hundred thousand shares sitting on one price by the penny and a stock that is a spread of like 25 to 50 cents most of the time. That's a key technical level in real time. You can hit that for all you want with no risk. If it re-offers re out, you know, you kick it. But if it breaks down from 750, now next thing you know, that's your scalping opportunity. In the case of Tesla, you could have gotten 30 points on that yesterday. You could have shorted all you wanted. So those specific things and visual cues, building out your system and seeing technical levels on the tape, we'll dive into a little bit more in the next video. But at the same time, that all factors back into where's the stock at contextually so that you can make that really quick play. Yes, this is just a review slide. You know, obviously covered all this already. Scalps a short-term momentum trade, very tight stops. Want to make these trades around key technical levels or in a stock that has a strong trend. Got to have a system for trend following. Got to have a system for defining key technical levels. Um, reading the tape is a vital skill and, and we'll talk about that next video. Okay, so now it's your turn. Is scalping a strategy that you use in your trading? If so, what are your favorite times to scalp? Let us know by leaving a comment below right now.